This is a painting of an historic house here in St. Augustine. And on Sunday mornings, a group of friends usually get together, pick a nice location around town, of which there are many, and we get together and paint for a couple of hours. Some of us use oils, some use acrylics. It doesn't really matter what we use. It's just a nice experience to get together with people of the same interest. This is a photograph I took of the house and landscape. And I could use this as a reference photograph, but as you can see in the painting I did, I could visualize lots more color than the photograph shows. And that's really one of the primary reasons to work on location because the photograph just does not pick up all the details with the color and values that the human eye can perceive. I'm working on a masonite board, eight by 10 inches covered with gesso. That makes a dark color and begin by trying to make an accurate drawing of my subject, paying particular attention to the composition and the perspective. Now the perspective on this is pretty simple because it's pretty much a one point perspective. And from there, I start to block in my large areas and large shapes. I don't worry about any detail at this point. Now one good thing about a reference photograph is that it does eliminate a lot of that detail, for instance, in those palm tree areas there. So that gives me that big blocky shape. But when I'm out on location, I have to see this for myself. Now here I am painting, but whatever it is that I'm looking at, whether it's a picture of myself or the landscape, I have to visualize the subject in certain ways in order for the painting to come out like I hope it will. The first thing I have to do is look at this subject as if it were points of color and value. So I try and look at the subject in an abstract way. I don't think of the house as a house or the tree as a tree. I think of them as shapes and points of light and color. And I also have to observe the subject as if it were in black and white. I have to look at the values of the painting. That's the lightness and darkness of the subject. Now, if you have a black and white photo, you can obviously tell what it is because the values are all right. You don't really need the color in order to have a good piece. So if it's a toss up between having accurate values in a painting or accurate colors, I always go for the accurate values first. Now, if I begin to introduce other colors to the painting that I don't actually see, it can sometimes enhance the painting, but it can also be very confusing, especially at the first part of a painting. If I introduce other colors, more brilliant colors like this, then I generally reserve that towards the end of the painting for some special areas or accents. Here I am working with these large masses, trying to get them in. I'm working with these darks first, warm dark colors first, and then I'll move towards my lights. I'm looking right into the sun at this point, and you can see the reflection from my shirt often lights up the painting. So it's a bit hard at this point to actually look at the subject, but the sun moves up fairly quickly and that uh, all changes. Now after having place my dark values in the painting, I work towards the middle tone values. So it's very important for me to get those three different values established in a painting, the darks, the middle tones, and the lights. Right here I'm working with these dark warm colors as my base coat and I'm starting to put some very dark greens over that to build the painting up in layers. Next comes the sky. It's a very warm sky because it's morning and I'm looking right into the sunlight. 
I'm using a very limited palette here. I have titanium white, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue. I have one red, that's a lizard and crimson. I have two yellows, a warm yellow and a cool yellow. The Indian yellow is a warm yellow. The cadmium yellow light is a cool yellow. And then I have one earth color and that's the yellow ochre. I find using a limited palette is very beneficial, especially when painting in the field. I find I can get all the colors I need with a, a few primary colors and maybe an earth color or two. And this way I can also maintain a lot of harmony within my painting without having a lot of extra colors to interfere with that. This was a bit of a scary part of the painting after having everything in there. Uh, these trees were an important part of the painting, but uh, you have to get up the courage to paint over areas that you've spent some time with. And uh, I wasn't really sure whether these trees were going to enhance the painting or, or really destroy the look of the piece. And it always takes a little bit of courage to push on knowing that uh, the piece could get worse rather than getting better. But I uh, found that persistence is a very important part of painting. And at the same time, I don't want to overdo anything. And I don't want to jump into too many details at first. I'm still working with these larger shapes, not putting in very much detail at this point. That will come in a little while. The paint on the sky back here was fairly thick and it was still wet when I started to put in these background trees. Now in real life, these trees were not as light and pale as I made them in my painting, but I wanted to give them some distance and some atmosphere. So I mixed that dark green in with the light color of the sky and that sort of mixed together to make that distant look in those trees. I don't like to leave any one part of a painting untouched, so I work on part of a painting here and then part of a painting there to try and complete it all at once. Here I'm starting to put in some of the detail on these palms. Here's where those dark colors, those dark large shapes really pay off because now I can put these lighter shapes of these palm fronds over those dark areas. There are a whole lot of greens in any subject, such as this palm. There are greens that the sun is shining on. Here at this point, the sun is reflecting off of the leaf, and you get these bright yellow greens when the sun is shining through the leaf itself. From here on out, a painting like this is primarily attention to detail and refinement. As I put in this detail and change the values and change the colors, I have to be very careful not to lose those big shapes that first established the painting. I hope you've enjoyed this short time-lapse demonstration. If you'd like to see some full-length demonstrations, you can visit our website paintingandtravel.com. <music>